On the tree of life, different branches are often occupied by species that look poles apart. But sometimes, what separates species is more social than physical, as it is with our closest relatives, chimpanzees and bonobos. Chimpanzees and bonobos live in similar jungles in equatorial Africa. They look alike, live in the same size communities, and eat similar foods. Yet, violence is a fact of life for chimpanzees. Battles between neighboring communities are common. So is the physical abuse of females by males. Bonobos, on the other hand, are essentially peaceful. In all instances, bonobos are predisposed to make love, not war. So why are humankind's closest relatives so different? For 20 years, Richard Wrangham has searched for an answer to that among the chimpanzees of Uganda's Kabali forest. Chimpanzee society is horridly patriarchal, uh, horridly uh, brutal in many ways from the female point of view. I mean, the young males, the late adolescents, it's almost a rite of passage for them. In order to be a, 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 an adult male chimpanzee, you have to be able to dominate all of the females. So that's rough from the female's point of view. They regularly get beaten up in, in horrid ways. Wrangham frequently finds himself in the middle of what, for want of another term, must be called a domestic dispute. The mofo chasing badly. Barbara's a young female and she's quite upset about being approached by the dominant male for sex. She's only used really to mating the young boys. There's our alpha male, uh, Imose, he's not used to being denied, and now he's after Tongo. And uh, uh, his erection, his penile erection, his hair erection, he really wants to get up Tongo. At the moment, she's escaped successfully. Female chimps aren't the only ones at risk. Infanticide is thought by primatologists to be a major factor in the evolution of chimpanzee sexuality. As a response to this danger, females try to copulate with all the males in the troop. The grisly logic of infanticide is disrupted if every male thinks every infant might be his. Under this regime in which the females are trying to get matings from lots of different males, then it's favored males to have these tremendous testes and large seminiferous tubules for storing the sperm. So uh, they can put in a tremendous uh, number of sperm, about five times as many as humans. It's very high quality sperm. If you look at human sperm, you know, the classic quote is from the vet who picks up a slide of human sperm and says, if this was a bull, I would shoot it. Um, but chimps, by comparison to humans, have very high quality sperm. And they can have uh, uh, five or more copulations per day. The whole thing only takes seven seconds, though. I mean, this is not fun sex by human standards. Bonobos, on the other hand, seem to find sex thoroughly enjoyable. For the past decade, Amy Parrish has been observing bonobo behavior at the San Diego Wild Animal Park. She's seen them go at it in every way imaginable. You get standard heterosexual interactions, which are often face-to-face, -face, the way they are in humans. You also see what we call ventral upright matings, where a male and a female will hang together out of a tree, suspended, and have sex. Males have sex with other males in what we call rump rump rubbing, where they stand and rub their scrotums together. We also see something among males called penis fencing, where males will suspend off of branches by their arms and rub their erect penises back and forth. 
and then a very remarkable behavior in which two females rub their genital swellings together in rapid sideways motions. So what's allowed bonobo females to establish such peaceful relations with males? Parrish believes the answer is female solidarity. By cooperating with each other and solidifying their bonds and reducing any tension that does exist, they're able to form alliances with each other and cooperatively dominate males. And this changes the whole balance of power and the whole social dynamic in the group and makes it radically different from chimpanzees. And why have bonobo females evolved a strategy and chimpanzee females haven't? It looks as though a relatively simple change in the feeding ecology is responsible for this dramatic difference in sexual behavior. The bonobos live in an environment where you have herbs much more continuously on the ground. And there are chimpanzees that live in similar forests, but wherever those forests are occupied by chimpanzees, they're also occupied by gorillas. The gorillas eat the food on the ground, leaving the chimpanzees heavily dependent on fruit trees. To get their share, the female chimps forage alone. Mothers, with their babies ranging in age from one to about five, can't move as quickly as the males. I mean, one infant is up here playing in the tree, and, uh, and a couple are, are nibbling slowly, and the mothers have to sit and wait for them. So it's absolutely typical that the males reach the big feeding ground first, and the males have finished all the food by the time the mothers arrive. So the mothers disperse away from each other and away from the males. And that means they can't have much opportunity to form bonds with each other. The simple fact that there was food available on the ground was that drove the evolution of bonobos. Rangham believes the catalyst was a long-lasting drought two million years ago in what is now Zaire. The plants and the gorillas that depended on them died. It was tough on the chimpanzees, but they could live on the fruit and the trees. When the rains and the plants returned, the gorillas didn't. Now the chimpanzees could get to the food on the ground. In time, they evolved into bonobos. It's been suggested that same drought forced our ancestors out of East Africa's forests and onto the plains. And once you had drying in a savanna area, then conditions became quite harsh. It was impossible for early humans to travel around in groups together in the way that bonobos do, and therefore for females to form alliances and dominate the males in the way that happens in bonobos. But a little bit different climatic history, a little bit different in our food history, and we might have evolved to be a totally different, more peaceful, less violent, more sexual species. Today, this theory is little more than interesting speculation. But the idea behind it is consistent with a growing but controversial body of scientific thought that claims much of present-day human behavior is rooted in our distant past.